I wanted to make sure I understood OpenBSD's do as utility as much as I reasonably could, minus actually having to read through the source code. So that's what we're doing in this video. Do as, which stands for Dedicated OpenBSD Application Sub Executor, according to its creator Ted Unungst. He could have just left it as a simple do as, but no. Unix systems have two classes of user, the super user and regular users. The super user is super, and everybody else is not, also according to Ted Unuxt on his blog. As you know, root is the name of that super user. It has ultimate power to do anything on the system, and generally speaking, logging in as root and executing all your commands as root all the time probably isn't the most secure method of computing. Do as does much the same as sudo, but the configuration is much simpler for everyday use. On his blog, Ted states the problems that he's running into with sudo and why he created do as. So I'll go ahead and read that to you here, and I'll also put a link to that uh, somewhere in the video. So he says, I started working on do as quite some time ago after some pers personal issues with the default sudo config. Um, blah, blah, blah. The core of the problem was really that some people like to use sudo to build elaborate sysadmin infrastructures with highly refined sets of permissions and checks and balances. Some people, me, uh, in this case, Ted, obviously, like to use sudo to get a root shell without remembering two passwords. And uh, so there was considerable tension trying to ship a default config that would mostly work with the second group, but not be too permissive for the first group. Writing a small, simple replacement meant that we could ship something in base, which was totally unsuitable for the PowerSys admin group. It could only work for me, and I would be happy. Meanwhile, those who truly needed all the flexibility of sudo would install it from ports, and they would be happy. So that's why he created sudo, or created sudo. That's why he created do as, to take care of the everyday tasks that may be a little too simple for the average user using sudo. Sudo does way too much for what most of us need every day, which is a lot of it is what he described here as uh, wanting to do a couple things. What is it? Like to get a root shell without having to remember two passwords. Yeah. Okay, let's check out my doas.conf file, so less etsy doas.conf. All right, pretty bare bones. Um, permit, no pass, wheel group. So what is this doing for me? So I am, I have put myself in the wheel group. So what this does is it says permit anyone in the wheel group to run, default is as root, so run as root, and then default is all commands, right? And then don't ask for a password. So permit anyone in the wheel group to run as root any command, and don't ask for a password. That's pretty bare bones. I could have put, um, go vim, let's see, do as dot com. So I could have put, oh, read only file, let's, let's go do as vim etsy doas.conf. So I could have put permit no pass freeman and then like that would have been fine. But uh, I wanted to go with the wheel group as it kind of is in like Ubuntu and uh, Debian and other other places. You really don't have to and there may be some pluses or minuses to doing that. But that's how this particular system is set up. So I mentioned Ted Unangst's blog posts earlier. He's got this one, uh, do as dedicated OpenBSD application sub-executor. And that's the one where I believe he introduces it um, to the world on his blog. And that's where I grabbed the uh, core problem and the goals that he was trying to achieve. There's also this other one, do as mastery. Now this is like the best other documentation you can get besides the man pages. So I do suggest you go check this out. So flack.tedunangs.com post uh, do as mastery. So 
what he's got here are some good examples. He says the simplest config is really quite simple, and it's nothing. That's going to deny everything. Um, then you come down here. The simplest one you could probably make is permit wheel. So permit anyone in the wheel group to do anything as root, but that's going to ask for a password. Um, and then you've got permit no pass keep and root. And the second rule, because do as evaluates rules in a last match manner. Root is in the wheel group, so the first rule will match, and then we need to override that with the second rule. So that's pretty cool. Why even run do as as root? Because sometimes you'd like to switch to a less privileged user. Or you have a script which uses do as to elevate privileges for an important operation, but you're already running root when you run it. So that's pretty neat. Keep that in mind. Um, let's see. Permit persist wheel. We saw that. I'm just going through a few of the examples he's got here, but you do want to read this. Um, let's see. Permit anyone in the wheel group to run the command reboot. So that's uh, that's kind of what I was saying earlier. It's like you can't run some commands unless you have root privileges or you're in the wheel group, and uh, that would give you that that permission right there. So here's another good example is permit no pass Zoltan, it's a cool name, as DB admin. So permit Zoltan to run anything in anything that DB admin can. It's pretty neat. Other ones, anyone in the operator group to run reboot. Oh, here's a good one. Permit Zoltan to run the command sh with the argument etsy net start. He's got here. Here we allow Zoltan to rerun the uh, the net start, net start script that configures network interfaces. If you've used OpenBSD for any period of time, you know that maybe you um, are moving networks or you're testing something out and you want to release your DHCP lease or you want to start, you know, grab, grab another one or you want to change the IP address, you're going to have to usually run the etsy net start command and you'll run sh etsy net start to run that, but you can't run that unless you have access to do so, which is you're going to need root privilege to do. So here he allows, uh, let's see, we've given Zoltan permission to run any shell command, only the net start script. Uh, we, oh, we don't give Zoltan permission to run any shell command, only the net start script. So that is pretty freaking cool. Uh, if you really only wanted Zoltan to run one thing, that's a good way to do it. And this is also a good way to be able to let people run commands and scripts without having to give them full root access. You know, full do as root everything. Just lock it down to a certain um, command and certain arguments. Further down here, he's got the path that any commands will be able to run from. He's got uh, the system path, you know, bin, sbin, blah, blah, blah. Zoltan won't be able to install an sh binary in his home directory and set path to home slash bin and subvert our intentions. So that's really nice. Here he gives further notation that any command arguments must be specified in their entirety. So permit Zoltan to run the command if config. You want to give him IWM zero up. You want to give him IWM zero down. So he's got two there. These two rules will allow Zoltan to return the Wi-Fi interface on and off, but not change any of its other parameters. So you can get pretty, this is pretty powerful without having to have the complexity of sudo. And here's an example of what I was talking about earlier. If you want to let a user run a command, but with no arguments, um, you would just, he's got an example here, permit no pass ted you to run the command fstat args. So, and as the user ted you, he says, um, so using fstat, one can always see the open files of other user's processes, but we specify arguments here to prevent tedu from matching up connections between processes. So he's saying, I don't want tedu's user to be able to run any args with fstat. He can just run fstat. So on my screen here, I've got another benefit of using do as, or sudo in this case, because sudo also does this, which is the logging of when people are, when users 
or elevating privileges on your system. So here you've got Freeman ran command um, reboot from as root from home slash Freeman. And that's really, really nice to have because with either using su to root or logging in to as root, um, say on your TTY or on your on your actual X server, um, you're not going to get that. So what this means is that you now have a nice log file of anyone elevating using elevated privileges or root privileges on your machine or on your systems. If, especially if, you aren't sharing the root password, then it'll be a lot more difficult for any attacker to get on your machine, watch you use do as, even if you're using a password, if you're not allowing yourself to run everything as root, then you've restricted that attacker from running running everything as root. They can only run what you can run. And then they would need to find your root password out some other way. Now, it's not impossible, obviously, but it makes it a little more difficult. And there's probably a few other things that you could do to make that even harder. And we'll go over those at some other point. But that's one of the beauties of do as is you have this log file to watch all this stuff. And of course, you can also set up some kind of automated alert whenever do as is run and it's not expected, or if someone tries to run do as and a command that you haven't specifically put in your doas.com file. That was probably really powerful. Say you uh, have only a certain number of commands in your doas.com file that you're allowed to run and elevate privileges with. If you have a log file alert that someone has tried to run a command that's not allowed in that file, you know your system's in trouble. So now that we've read through it all, I'm thinking the ideal configuration would be figure out the 90 to 99 percent of stuff that you have to elevate elevate your privileges for and use do as for. Specify each of those in your doas.com file, and then run just those. And for any one-offs, just go do as as you or log in as root. Let me know if there's anything else that you're curious about as far as do as goes. Um, if you've got any questions about it any comments on what you've seen here or any con like helpful comments that can even uh, help my understanding of it or help someone else's understanding of it. So yeah, got any questions or comments, let me know and uh, see you next time.